there's this particular clip that really interested me that popped up on one of my favorite accounts on Instagram, which is called Made You Think 101. Definitely check it out if you haven't already. Made You Think 101. Now, this particular guy, I forgot his name, something like HPDBSY or something, I forgot his actual name. But to me, he's kind of like our version. Well, not our version because Andrew Tate's from here also. But he's like a hood version, quote unquote, of Andrew Tate, this, this mixed race guy, right? Um, he does kind of like, you know, he does content on Kick where he basically live streams himself going to Ibiza, picking up girls, talking about fucking, I don't know, crypto and Forex stuff. Loads of, loads of quasi scamming shit, loads of out for male nonsense but for the most part it's kind of harmless you know stuff you can put on if you want to have a shit in the giggles and stuff but he made this little clip this little interview was really interesting because he spoke about a cameraman who scammed him before right and it was really interesting to me to think about the psychology of a scammer like this like why would you decide to go for the short-term prize of scamming somebody that you're working with like that who's paying you a decent salary and also putting you up and paying for everything else why would you scam when really the long-term option of sitting down doing the job for that guy filming what it needs to be filmed for an hour for not for a year or two is a good way to go because you can stack your money and then decide to do your own thing why would you scam and try and steal in the beginning? It's really, really strange. But let me play the clip for you and then you can see what I mean about this scamming story. Let's load it up right now. Get it available. Boom. Can we call him out? What guy? Ty. Ty. Did you say, oh, Ty. Yeah. What? Oh, perfect. Let's perfect call him out. Oh, yeah, example. Call Ty out. Okay. So it was a guy who worked for Tell me. Tell him how he's we called, went to Thailand and everything. It's called Ty. Okay. And... He was my cameraman and I was paying him four and a half K a month or something, which is a lot of money for a cameraman. He was doing nothing before this. Like he was dead broke. When I say dead broke, I mean zero. He's 50 like grand a year. 23, 24 years old. Yeah, and he, I gave him a good job. And it wasn't just that. It was free accommodation, free flights, free tables in clubs. So he was living a Around mad experience. Around goals, Bro, He partying. was living a mad experience. Yeah. The tables in the clubs. I'm doing fucking eight, nine grand a week just on clubs. So he's living a big lifestyle. He's, he's having fun. All right, he's got to hold the camera and get some content with, with the girls, but come on now. Anyway, a month or two went down the line. We went to Thailand uh, on a trip to Thailand together. And actually it ended up that he was, I had him, gave him another job where he could make even more money. So this is another opportunity I gave him because I thought I could trust him. And up until then, he'd not been disloyal to me at all. He then started messaging people off of my Telegram and taking payments to his private bank account instead of my bank account while living with us. And we didn't even... And we were paying for him in Thailand. We were paying for him, We yeah. were splitting it when it was him as well. We were in a, a three million pound villa. Yeah. And he was living in there. We were balling out in Thailand, spending a lot of money there. And he was just, yeah, living there for whatever, for free. And I found out he was doing that. And that was like a little sly move for him. All right, he stole six grand, but he lost, he paid me back and he lost the opportunity. He's not working with me now. And now he's a bum. Didn't he take you as well with the, with the chicks? Oh, yeah. Let's call him out. Fuck Mate, I was, in, I was in my fucking Mansory Urus with three chicks in the car and the two in the back that was like, oh, um, who's, th this isn't, this isn't your car, it's your friend's car, isn't it? And I went, I just, I remember, I was like, what? She was like, yeah, like he said that it's his car and his, it's all his watches and he lets you use it because you're a social media guy to get your more influence and stuff. Anyway, so you got the gist of the flipping clip, right? It's really surprising to me that this happens because in my opinion, most, more often than not, people like this guy um, usually aren't the greatest bosses, right? They sometimes don't pay on time. They sometimes won't follow through on their promises. They sometimes, you know, put, unex put unacceptable or unrealistic deadlines on you. But if you work with somebody like that, who for the most part is paying you on time, is giving you the opportunity that you need to do your things you need to do, why would you bother scamming? Even if you find the guy annoying, like imagine if you work for somebody, he pays you, the work experience is okay, but you just find him personally annoying and ag agitating. Fair enough. Just keep your head down, stack the money up after a year and then bounce. The scamming thing along the way at the same time whilst working there is weird if you don't have an exit plan. That's what I'm saying. I would think maybe scamming that kind of guy and taking money on the side or doing whatever he's doing, driving his car, pretending it's yours. All that stuff is good if you're planning to leave. It's kind of like, okay, cool, I'm leaving and I'm going to fucking flip the table as I go. Cool. But 
Oh, surely the long-term vision or the long-term idea of putting your head down, being a good employee, working well, and then leaving on good terms and having this guy as a reference or having that door still open and slightly ajar if ever you're like down bad on money or they need you to kind of cover something, you can be there and it's all good and it's all good vibes. That should be the right way to go about things really, shouldn't it? But then... I'm thinking to myself, actually, to be fair, not to be fair, but maybe to understand the scammer a little bit, maybe it's difficult if you're a cameraman and even though you're getting paid well, in comparison with the talent, you're like a peon. So maybe you're still getting paid well, you're getting looked after, but you're seeing the amount of money, the amount of attention that this guy is getting and it's pales in comparison to anything you could do on your own. And maybe a little bit of jealousy, a little bit of inadequacy starts bubbling up underneath you. And you start feeling like, I deserve that. I need that as well. And then you start to get a little bit, you know, sticky with the fingers or something. Personally, I don't understand it. I don't think it makes any sense, especially when you consider the scale of what this guy's doing his thing at. He gets lots of people out there, you know, following his content, like what he does. You know, they find him entertaining and shit. You would imagine this is going to be content that's going to go on for a long time. This is going to be a job that you could do for flipping ages. You can essentially do this job as a cameraman and also do your own thing on a, on a side. You can maybe start vlogging like, um, who's the guy? The guy that does the photography and the vlogs for Mike Thurston, who's like a bodybuilder guy, a UK guy who's really famous for, for bodybuilding and working out in, on, on YouTube. He's a vlogger and stuff and whatnot, has his own business. He has this camera guy that follows him around. And over time, because the camera guy was good and had good banter behind the camera, he then set up his own channel. And now he's got his own little side career on top of the stuff he does with the main talent. So you could basically use that platform that you have by, you know, following this person around to kind of leverage and to use it to kind of do your own thing. So it's very short sight of the person, whoever they were, to start nicking money and doing all the other weird stuff. But I would imagine, I'd imagine in that scene of influencers and whatever it may be, that's really common. I just got a feeling it's really common. People leave stuff around. They leave money around. You know, the codes to people's phones. You got bank cards. You put stuff on a company card. Like, I'm sure there's loads of scams and loads of little, you know, stuff happening in between people and groups and stuff. But maybe it's, you have to be a bit clever with it and not be so obvious. But I'm sure that happens often. I remember one time, actually, this one guy, like, bless him. This guy I used to work with at this old company. Um, that I actually I actually left as well. Actually, had yeah, the same well a bit after he left, and because I did I did some madness there too. But enough about me. But this guy one time his workplace I used to, this place I used to work at he unfortunately got fired because guess what he was using the company card to buy his kids Happy Meals on the way home. It wasn't like he was broke or anything. He just wanted didn't want to spend his own money. So I guess because he's oh sorry that's a bit sorry he was separated from his wife. So whenever he'd go pick up the kids, I don't know, three times a week, whatever it was, they'd always go to McDonald's. And obviously he'd go for a drive through and he'd just use a company card. He'd never use his own card. And I guess over time, those fucking McDonald's, you know, they added up over time and it became a little bit obvious. And the money was a bit too much. And then he ended up getting fired off the back of that. Like, imagine that. Imagine getting fired because something like that. That is like, that's kind of embarrassing, isn't it? It's a little bit embarrassing. Little, little, little bit embarrassing that you get fired for using the company card to buy your kids Happy Meals. Because it just sounds like you're broke, really. When in actuality, you're not. You're just doing it because you don't want to spend your own money. But then obviously, in the company's, you know, way, that looks like gross misconduct. Well, it doesn't look like it. It is gross misconduct. So, it get a bit sticky. It can get a bit sticky. <laughs>